This is a film made in the afternoon, as you may have just read. And it is a time of day when uh, the sun is sharply from the left, as to say from the west. And so the right hand side tends to be blotted out by the sun. I'm a little worried too about the Leaning Tower of Pisa on the right hand side with the bird bath on top which seems to be acquiring a greater angle. We'll have to watch that in successive films or perhaps I should make amends. There is a bird there which is doing things that you expect a male satin bar bird to do. And as you know this is the bar of the bird we call Odim bar, a particularly elegant black blue adult male satin bar bird. But as you can see, as you can see more clearly when this bird comes further into the picture, this is not a blue black satin male, uh, satin adult male bar bird. It's a green bird or a greeny browny gold bird and at times you, when the light catches it you'll see how stylish it is. But questions are raised. What is this bird doing? Now I should give some context that when I was a student, indeed when I was a working person and indeed in my retirement I have often enough found it difficult to concentrate firmly on a task for more than 20 minutes. But I think it's a mark of intelligence of this bird. Let's not say the whole species. We're not looking at the whole species at the moment. This bird is going to show you that it can concentrate on what it's doing for a period in excess of 20 minutes. Here it stopped fiddling with bottle top and it's come in to fiddle with the bower. And uh, it's looking around. It's a very interesting thing to speculate as to how a young bower bird learns everything that he has to learn before becoming an adult. This bird may not be very different in age from Odin bower. Satin bower bird males change their plumage from these greeny colours to the blue-black when they're about seven years old. That's to say that, putting it another way, for seven years at least, Odimba has been in the company of a gang of peers and other associates and relatives who have all been green and who have learned to muck about together. So that one leads one to think about what happens to the male bird when it reaches that point in its maturation that it changes colour and its whole role in life changes towards having to please the people with movie cameras in springtime who want to see it do fancy dances for women. Well, as we've mentioned before, this isn't springtime. It's May, it's the 7th of May 2017 uh, and it's in Australia which means that we're heading towards winter. This week we have temperatures of say 7 to 9 Celsius up to 20 or so and it's sunny and it's exceptionally mild and very enjoyable for humans and uh, I hope it is also for bower birds. The situation then is that unless these birds, this bird has made a terrible mistake and thought the mild weather was perhaps the beginning of spring, he's doing something that is entirely appropriate for him in the autumn, which is, I refer to Odin rather than the bird we're looking at, which is get his bow ready and do a lot of practicing. But here we see somebody who could be related, who could be somebody that Odin has known for a long time, uh, but he's still green. And now he'll stop filling with the bow, stop examining, stop examining the bow carefully, and is doing the noisy bottle top dance.
that whereas the adult bird has got a technique of dancing beside the bower so that not only the female can watch him through the gauzy veil of the side of the bower, but we can see him. This bird's still all over the place about where to dance. Perhaps he's shy. Perhaps he's a bit anxious about being caught playing this game. There's a bit here where it's a bit hard to see what he's doing altogether. But the purpose of leaving the film bits intact, their three minute pieces with little gaps between them, is really to give us an opportunity to see how long he sticks with this task. Now, I'm calling it a single task in that while he's doing different things the overall task is learning to be a grown up bow minding all singing all dancing entertaining super clever blue and black bow bird And I'm not the person who's ever going to find out when somebody finds out uh, whether the engagement in these activities uh, cause the maturation and the change of plumage. I don't know what percentage of male bowerbirds actually will make the change. I don't know if anybody knows. I'm conscious reading a wonderful book by Ian Rowley, who published this book in 1974 called Bird Life. Uh, Rowley was at that time at the Gungahlin Research, Wildlife Research Station of the CSIRO, the Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organization of Australia. Uh, just outside the Australian capital of Canberra and he was a, an animal behaviour specialist and the book Bird Life is, when I first read it and was uh, found it wonderful in 1974 when it was new, uh, is interesting in that it's not a bird book with lots of pictures so much as a chapter upon chapter of behaviour. And what it said about the bowerbird there was that people were still having enormous difficulty understanding it all the way through the 50s and up into the, 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 well, well up towards 1970. And that uh, people were failing to catch and put coloured rings on the legs of these green birds making it very hard to work out what was going on and those who did sustain uh, achieve a knowledge uh, were those who sustained a practice of going out every morning through springtime to observe what was happening now it is perhaps our species preoccupation with uh, the springtime and the glorious male ritual dance for the picky, picky satin bowerbird females in springtime that engages everybody's attention. But here we have events taking place very quietly in the autumn. The boss is out. The green bird is in lurking in the bushes just to the left of center of our picture at the present time. There's a great deal for a young bird to learn. It's evident from other films and general observation that there are lots of green birds about and they 
some of them behave intelligently, shall we say, positively towards the bower and its owner. Others are pretty juvenile delinquent types. And some, of course, of the green birds, one would think perhaps half of them, are females. I've never seen a female bowerbird's nest. There their lives are different. This is not by in any way a nest. This is a dancing pavilion and a singing pavilion. The birds, the female birds, on their own, maintain nests elsewhere. There is some argument in the literature that um, the preference given to dark blue objects in the collection of things by bowerbirds uh, relates to the colour of their eyes, which are indeed a very intense blue, and their plumage to some extent. And perhaps it accentuates that in the eyes of females. What we can't see, but what a little bit of the literature suggests, is that the uh, male satin bowerbird, in putting saliva and paste of charcoal, or whatever, on the bower, is not just applying something that ladies can taste when they come around, but is also giving the bower an iridescence or a luminescence. We can't see it, but apparently that dowdy bunch of sticks there for bowerbirds has qualities, great or small, of interesting shininess, perhaps startling shininess. Meanwhile, we're learning about the task of picking up the leaf or the petal and picking up bottle top at the same time, which is, I guess when you've not done it before, is an interesting thing to learn. I personally have never tried it. Well, certainly not with my teeth. But then this is not a career to which I aspire. I'm 73, it's a bit late to contemplate such a radical career change, even though I know these days young people must anticipate lives full of multiple careers. There are some things at which some species are more adept than others, and I have to say, as we pass the 13-minute mark in this movie, that one thing this bowerbird is adept at is concentrating. Obviously, at no time in its life was this child bowerbird subjected to watching Sesame Street with its habit of teaching people very swift satisfaction. It is a lovely afternoon. The weather is superb. And there aren't really any distractions or difficult people around to interfere with this bird's pleasure, dare we say pleasure, uh, concentration, interest in wandering about and understanding the art of, of the bower. Makes you thirsty though, doesn't it? I hope it doesn't fall over that bird bath. That would be a great shame. Not at this point anyway, please.
you can see I once took a course in agricultural engineering when you look at that bath and the first law of agricultural engineering is if it works don't fix it now with this fresh clip we see that the bower bird has come on the ground and that slightly smaller bird over there having a drink is a pigeon these people have well not very much interaction and certainly no mutual apprehension This is the way with a lot of wildlife when they occupy different niches. That bower bird can carry on, but that pigeon's going to get its drink. What is the bower bird doing? Is it contributing saliva? Is it uh, tweaking twigs? think of concentration. It's important to recognize that these birds are hunters. And whereas a farmer may be obliged to go out every day and repeat the same tasks or starve, a hunter has to go out every day and look all around and do different things to avoid being eaten and to get something to eat. The bowerbird in fact <coughs> combines some farmer and some hunter habits it's very clear that there is a lot of work that, is, that takes place in the organising of the cats and the development of rituals and the amazing of the bower. Uh, but there's also the need to keep an eye out. And sometime or other, but obviously not in this 20 minute period, get something to eat. I find it very interesting also that um, whereas some of us humans over a period of 20 minutes, are you still there, uh, may need to go and get a snack. This bird seems to be able to run for 20 minutes without having to go snacking. And as you'll see from other clips, uh, bow birds are very high energy birds getting about, whipping about, uh, consuming a lot of energy. I would note that when I mentioned to a lady at the post office the other day that I had a bow bird bow in my garden, she looked at me slightly severely and said, how many more would you like? Which here on the edge of farmland and with people endeavouring to grow things, not least fruit in their gardens, is a reasonable severity of attitude towards the bowerbird. When I had a rural property before, I had a neighbour who had an acre of strawberries growing and who went shopping one afternoon and found that at the end of her shopping when she came back she had no strawberries she had a lot of bowerbirds a lot of very very happy hyperactive bowerbirds the green bowerbirds are said to be somebody said to me once 10 to the hectare in this part of coastal Australia. I suspect sometimes that's an understatement because the expression was female bowerbirds and I don't know whether that 
how people count accurately the number of female bowbirds in the context of them sharing their coloration with the juveniles, all of the juveniles. Meanwhile, it's dance time. I think it's the blackbird rather than this bird that has been soaring off the edge of the lettuce leaves in the backyard. But I know from the evidence here that this bird is responsible for the fact that we, in fact, have no crop or no share of the crop coming from our Cape gooseberries, which are just uh, 10 metres away from this place and provide not only... Um, food, but also objects to dance with. New clip. Where is he? There he is. Uh, why have we gone up there? What's the matter? Is there something happening? Is the uh, boss coming back? Is the boss coming back? Is that what it is? Better stand up straight. But no, I haven't been doing anything. I haven't been anywhere near it. Wasn't me. Wasn't me. In fact, I'm not a competitor at all. Or you're going to be a bit of a carry on. Oh. Well, actually, I think, speaking as a wind bird, that I've done such an amount of work around here for 20 minutes. I should probably be making some sort of claim against this character down here. I suppose he thinks it's his bow, but then what's in the nature of bow birding that it doesn't really work like that. It's a highly competitive business and I'm just going to stand up here on a stick in front of the camera looking really, really big and see if that impresses him. Oh god, he's going to keep going on. Oh, what have I done? This is a sensible thing, is he? What is he going to think? He's going to muck up his under... Am I a female, perhaps? Oh, that's what females do. They look under it. Oh god, does he think I'm a girl? Am I a girl? I don't know. I was just enjoying myself. Oh, no, 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 I don't want to be part of this, for this. He doesn't think I'm a girl anymore, I don't think. I think in the theatre they say voices off. I've been here 20, I've done, put in 20 minutes work, I've, put, I've done an awful lot, I, I'm, I'm, I'm seriously, I'm a squatter, see, of squatter's rights, I think, I think. Is this what they call a standoff?
like a senior infantry officer, really. No matter how important their uniform gets, you always have the sense that they're looking for something moving in the long grass 20 metres away. There it is, that pussy that moved. Is this the end of it? Oh! Be careful the camera. Standing on top of the chair, the camera rests on somebody is. I'm not going to get another camera to aim at the camera so we can see what's happening. I have to leave a bit of mystery in life too. Is there something you do now when you're a bit scared? You turn your back and scratch and scratch and carry on, or you're just trying to sort yourself out after getting your feathers ruffled, ruffled by some ruffling? Bye bye. I think this is coming to the end now. Thank you for the great show today. Bye-bye.